Okay, we're interested in what quadratic graphs look like because um, they help us solve lots of problems when we can visualize how they're going to behave. So let's read through some of this. Recall that x refers to the input of a function and that the expression f of x refers to the output. For graph sketches, we often write y equals f of x. In other words, we set the y values to be the output of the function. So we just say that f of x is, is the y value. So in other words, the y coordinate is the result of the value. Let me put the x coordinates over here. So a few things about a sketch before we start talking about a quadratic sketch. A sketch in maths has a clearly defined meaning. We care about the general shape of the graph, not exact points of the shape. The axes should have no scale, so we don't put in one, two, three, four, we just have no scale at all. Generally, the only coordinates that are indicated are intercepts with the axis, intercepts meaning where it crosses the axis, or other points of interest, sometimes intersections of multiple graphs, sometimes turning points or maximums and minimums and things like that. So what features are needed when we do a sketch of a quadratic? Well, obviously, we need to have the axes drawn and we label it x and y. And there's some things that we've got here. So I've said recall that a root of a function is where the output, in this case, the y value is zero. So these two places here and here, these places have a y value of zero. So these are the roots. So we will definitely want to label what the roots are. This point that I'm referring to down here is where it crosses the y-intercept. So this is the y-intercept. I guess really the roots are the x-intercept, but we use it so commonly we don't really use the word x-intercept, we use the word roots instead. This arrow here is talking about the shape of the quadratic. Now the shape of the quadratic is either going to be this kind of u-shape or this kind of upside down U shape. So we need to make sure that we've got the shape correct. That one is going to be when you have X squared values, when you have AX squared with A bigger than zero, this one is gonna be when A is less than zero. And then last of all, this bit that we have at the bottom is what we call the turning point. In this particular case, this is a minimum. You could obviously have a maximum as well. Those are gonna be the things that we are interested in. That's the very bottom part of the quadratic. So I'm going to try and sketch these different things. So there's a few things that I need to know about. I need to know, first of all, the shape. I want to know the roots. I want to know the y-intercept. And in this particular case, it wants me to know the turning point. And the turning point is going to either be a maximum or a minimum. So it wants us to sketch this graph that we've got here. So y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. Well, in this case, a is equal to 1. So the a value is greater than 0. So we know that the shape of this graph is just going to be that kind of positive shape of the quadratic. So this means that the turning point is definitely not going to be a maximum. It's going to be a minimum value because it's going to be when it gets as low as possible. So I've done the shape. Now I'm going to find out what the roots are. So the roots are when x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals zero. Now this is when I don't mind you just using your calculators to put in the value of a is one, b is three, and c is minus four, and your calculator will tell you right away that the two roots are x equals one and x equals minus four. Now the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So we would have zero squared so f of 0, let's not say f of 0, let's say y is equal to 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 4. I mean, it's pretty obvious to see that you have the y-intercept is minus 4. And so we've done this. Now we're going to do the turning point. Now the turning point, we know how to do turning points. We will complete the square. So all of these skills are coming together now. So I have x squared plus 3x minus 4. And when I complete the square, I would have x plus 3 over 2 squared minus 3 over 2 squared, which is minus 9 over 4 minus 4. So that's x plus 3 over 2 squared 
and then I've got minus 9 over 4, minus 4, which is minus 25 over 4. So the minimum value is minus 25 over 4. And this occurs when x is equal to minus 3 over 2. So really, this thing that I've written here is actually going to be a y-coordinate. And obviously, this is going to be an x-coordinate. So the turning point, I need to make sure I've got enough room to actually sketch this. So the turning point is x-coordinate y-coordinate. I'm going to try and put all of this information now onto a sketch. So I'll draw the axes and I'm going to draw the quadratic to begin with. I know it's going to cross at 1 and minus 4, so 1 and minus 4, somewhere like that, it doesn't really matter. So we've got 1 and minus 4. Maybe I shouldn't have drawn the sketch straight away. Maybe I should say to myself, OK, it's going to cross at minus 4 and 1, and the y-intercept is at minus 4. So it's going to be this kind of shape. Just to indicate what the values are. So it's minus 4, 1. That's minus 4 from the y-intercept. And the turning point that I've got down here is minus 3 over 2, minus 25 over 4. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Let's check we've got all of those things. Good, we've got the correct shape. We've got the roots on there, we've got the y-intercept, and we've got the turning point. And you'd be interested to know that quadratics are symmetrical. So this is actually a line of symmetry through the turning point that we've got there. OK, let's try this particular one that we've got. So remember the things that we need. Shape, roots y-intercept, turning point. OK, well, look at this to begin with. y equals, I'm going to write it in the traditional order, y equals minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. Because a is minus 2, it is a negative number, and so the shape of this graph is going to be this shape, which means that the turning point is actually going to be a maximum. That's the maximum value, how high it gets. So let's find the roots. I'm going to use my calculator and be really lazy. The roots of when minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. Roots means equals 0. So I'm going to go to my calculator. Minus 2, 4, and minus 3. Mm -hmm. Have I done something wrong here? Because my one has just, I think I've typed it in. Minus 2, 4, and minus 3. Ah. So when you put this into your calculator, I haven't done this wrong, I get no real roots. That's weird. Let's see what this means. There's no real roots. I wonder what this means. I'll put a couple of question marks there and we can come back to it. So I've done the shape. I think I've done the roots. Let's find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So y would be equal to minus 3 because obviously this and this are 0. And then we're going to have a look now at the turning point. So I'm going to put this in completed square form. So y equals minus 2, and I'm going to take out a minus 2. That's x squared minus 2x. Just check that that gives you the right thing. So you get minus 2x squared minus 2 times minus 2x is 4x. Good, minus 3. I'm going to complete the square. So that's going to be x minus 1 squared minus 1 minus 3. So it's minus 2 x minus 1 squared plus 2 minus 3. In other words, we have minus 1, 2 minus 3, minus 2 x minus 1 squared. So this looks like the maximum value is minus 1 when x equals 1. So the maximum value is minus 1 when x is equal to 1. In other words, the turning point is x is 1, y is minus 1. Let's have a look now at the graph and see if this will make some sense. So we've said that the turning point is 1 minus 1. There's a turning point here, and we know it's an upside down graph. So it's going to look like this. This is 1 
minus 1. And we said here that there were no real roots. Ah, well, I guess there are no real roots because here's the axis and it doesn't cross the axis anywhere at all. So this is because the graph doesn't intersect the x-axis. And you can see now from the shape, because it's underneath the x-axis, it's definitely not going to be intersecting with it. So there's x and there's y. We said that the y-intercept from here is minus 3, so you can try and organise your page as best as possible. And it also wanted us to write down the equation of the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry goes through here, and the equation of that line of symmetry is just that x is equal to 1. I kind of lost that information here. So the turning point was 1 minus 1. Okay, so it doesn't have to cross the axis. If there are no real roots, if you get imaginary numbers in your calculator, then it means it doesn't cross the axis. And so the turning point was below the axis in this particular one. Okay, so you have got four questions to have a go at here. You've got these two, and you've got these two here as well. And what I'd like you to do for these is sketch them, indicating any intercepts with the axes, the turning point, and the equation of the line of symmetry. I'm going to go through these in just a second. I'm going to try and go through them quite quickly. Okay, so for all of these ones, I need to do the shape, the roots, the y-intercept, and then either the turning point, the maximum or the minimum. So clearly the shape of this one is going to be this shape. And I'm going to find the roots by putting x squared plus 4 on my calculator. It's going to be pretty obvious. It's going to be um, no real roots. OK, so there are no real roots. Whoops. That means it doesn't cross the x-axis. The y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 4. So we have 0, 4. And then the turning point, well, it's already in completed square form. So the turning point is that the minimum value is 4. And that occurs when x equals 0. So we have 0, 4 is the turning point. So when I sketch this, my turning point is at 0, 4 which is also the y-intercept, and it is a shape like this. So there's my y, there's my x, and the equation of the line of symmetry is just that x equals 0. And look, you can see here, there are no real roots, so it doesn't cross the axis anywhere. Okay, next one. Clearly, the shape is going to be this. I'm going to find the roots by putting it on my calculator. So I've got 1, minus 7, and 10. And so my roots are uh, x equals 5 and x equals 2. So the coordinates are going to be 5, 0 and 2, 0. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. When x equals 0, y would be equal to 10. So we're going to have 0, 10. And now I'm going to do the turning point. So I'm going to complete the square. So it'll be x minus 7 over 2 squared minus 49 over 4 plus 10. So that's x minus 7 over 2 squared minus 49 over 4. Oh, I've written that wrong. Minus 49 over 4. And I've written that wrong. Plus 10. That's minus 9 over 4. So the minimum the x would be 7 over 2, and the y value would be 9 over 4. So when I do the sketch, put all of this information on, the roots are at 2 and 5, so I'm going to have it here and here. It's crossing the y-axis at 0, 10, so it's crossing over here. Let's try and draw this in. So this is 10, 2, 5. This point that we've got here, the coordinate of that is 7 over 2. Whoops, that's a minus 9 over 4 because it was a minimum. You can see it from here. 
minus 9 over 4. And that must mean that the equation of the line of symmetry is when x is 7 over 2. And I should have said this is y and this is x. There's quite a lot of work in sketching these ones, okay? So let's have a look at this. First of all, the shape is going to be upside down because of this negative that we've got here. And for the roots, I shall find them by making it equal to zero on my calculator. So a is minus two, b is five, and c is three. So my roots are that x is three, or x is minus 0 0.5. So that's three zero is the coordinate, and minus 0 0.5, or minus a half zero. The y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 3. You can just see that by looking at this. And so I've done the shape, the roots, the y-intercept. The last thing I'm going to need to do is the completing square form. So that's y equals minus 2 x squared minus 5 over 2 x plus 3. Just expand that and check. Minus 2 x squared plus 5 x. Yep. Now I'm going to complete the square. So that is going to be x minus 5 over 4 squared minus 25 over 16. That's 5 over 4 squared plus 3. So that's minus 2 x minus 5 over 4 squared. Now I'm going to do this. Uh, there's a negative times a negative, so it's going to be a plus 2 times 25 over 16, which is 25 over 8 plus 3. So 25 over 8 plus 3 is 49 over 8 minus 2 brackets x minus 5 over 4 squared. Now because of the shape here, we know that it's going to be a maximum. And so the maximum is going to be when x is 5 over 4, y is 49 over 8. So there's a lot to do here. Let's go back to trying to sketch this. So the roots are at 3 and minus 0 0.5. And we know that it's crossing at 3. So it's just going to be this kind of shape. And that makes sense that we've got this maximum point here is 5 over 4, 49 over 8. And we have, this is minus 0 0.5, this is 3, this is 3. And that line of symmetry is when x equals 5 over 4. I guess there's another way we could have found this 5 over 4. Um, the other thing is that we know because it's completely symmetrical, you should see that 5 over 4 is halfway between 3 and minus 0 0.5. So if you do 3 add minus 0 0.5 and half it, you should get 5 over 4. So if I do 3 add minus 0 0.5 and I half it, I do get 5 over 4. And you've got that symmetrical property. So last one, and then you're going to have a go at doing some of these um, in an exercise, is we are going to do this. So the shape is going to be this shape. The roots, I'm going to see if I can go a little bit quicker and just write down the answers. We've got 1, 4, and 11. We have no real roots from my calculator. So that means it's going to be hovering above the axis. The y-intercept, that is going to be when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 11. And we're now going to complete the square. So that's going to be x plus 2 squared minus 4 plus 11. So that's x plus 2 squared plus 7. So the minimum point when x is minus 2, y is 7. So when x is minus 2, y is 7. Not very good at doing these nice and smooth. So you've got that kind of quadratic hovering up there. No roots to indicate this is 11. And that line of symmetry is coming down here when x is equal to minus 2. So that's how you do sketching of quadratics.